We're live. Let's see. There it is. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Tuesday's Filson Live. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Nick Bachtel, and I own the Bachtel Forging Company. I'm a one-man knife shop in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. There it is. And uh, I'm gonna be forging out a little, not a little, be forging out a Bowie knife. So I'm in Ohio, and it's it's a little late. Just turned nine o'clock, and. Uh, Let's hope the neighbors don't mind. We're gonna be forging out of the power hammer. Starting the preform of a knife blade. This will be like a small Bowie knife, kind of like a hunting sized Bowie. I drew out the bar. This is a real thick piece of steel. I drew the bar out a little bit and I uh, began to forge the tip in and then I set it down. And right now, this is kind of, it's considered forging the preform of the knife. So it'll kind of look, you know, curved downward. And then when I forge in the bevels, it'll straighten itself up. And uh, yeah, it'll be a nice little knife. Back into the forge it goes. How's everyone doing tonight? Hey, Nathan. <laughs> How's it going, guys? A little bit chilly here in Ohio. It was snowing earlier and it was pretty windy, but everything kind of died down and it's a perfect night. Perfect night to keep the neighbors away. So on drawing the blade out, work on the tip a little bit more. I'll come over to the, the anvil and work the tip a little bit further. Here we go. A little bit of shape refinement. 
My uh, handle side's getting a little hot, so I'm going to take it over to the water. So we have the tip knocked in. There's a little bit of distal taper. And uh, we're just gonna keep on drawing it out a little bit. Maybe start working the bevels under the power hammer. I'll use both the bar and a pair of tongs to maneuver it. Keep it from jumping all over the place. Hope everybody's doing well with the whole coronavirus. You know, hope everybody's staying sane. That's why, I mean, that's why we're doing the Filson Lives, you know, just connect everybody and, you know, sit around, sit around the forge, sit around the campfire and talk a little bit. Well, I'm going to go take a, take a look back at the field. My, uh, my wood, my brush to scrape some of the scale. Okay, so let's start. Let's start laying in some bevels. Very close to final shape, about as close as, about as close as I can, and then uh, saves me a lot of time at the grinder. So. Let's see. Can't bring you in a little bit. There we go. See what we can do. Cutting edge. 
It's just a hair under six inches, which isn't bad. Just forging the blade out further and further, drawing it out, and uh, hammering on those bevels. It'll just make the blade get nice and thin, and uh, kind of, it'll make it get thin, and a little less wide, does that, that make sense? I don't know. We've been forging all day. We ain't thinking, we're just forging. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back underneath the power hammer and just keep working the, the clip of the knife, the very tip, the forward third. Ooh, sharp, oh yeah. Lord. Uh oh. I'm missing a couple comments. There it is. Hi, how's it going, everybody? So we're gonna go straight to the the hand ha the hand hammer on the anvil. So. back. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. That's my cousin. How's it going, Joey? Uh, okay. My website is bactylforgingcompany.com. On my Instagram page, you can... Uh, Head over there, check out the knives that I make, check out some of my other stuff. And then on my website, you can see different commissions that I've made, all different kinds of stuff. The steel that I'm using, how's it going, Joseph? The steel I'm, go I'm using is 80 CRV2. Some of the best blade steel that's made today comes right out of Germany. It's good stuff. Gonna do a little bit more uh, refinement, drawing out, coming back under the power. ways. It's looking good. Now I'm going to pinch the heel out a little bit more and set in the ricasso and start working the tang. I'll probably cut this off of this bar here pretty soon. Maybe not next heat, but the heat after. I'll cut the bar somewhere in here. I'll show you how you cut steel using a hammer and another piece of steel. 
we're gonna pinch those, uh, the, the heel of the blade out. What am I gonna do for the handle? It's a good question. My favorite handle material is uh, elk antler or moose antler. Maybe some cool, a cool piece of domestic wood. Hmm. Hey, thanks, Corey. I could do it all day. I love forging. Ah. YouTube's cool, but I got knives to make. It's too little time in the day. Nah, you don't need gloves. Okay. Let's come over here. I'm just saying we're in my uh, my garage shop in suburban Ohio. Let's see. There we go. Get a nice shot of the anvil for you. We're gonna pull that heel down. use the corner of the anvil and the corner of my hammer to just work the heel of this blade down. little bit of the shadow where I, I hammered this down just a hair and now we're gonna go under the power hammer uh, just push the choil and kind of tighten up the ricasso what is he doing what is he doing we're forging a knife we're getting steel hot Just having fun. Hey, from Columbus. I'm just a bit north of Columbus, near Akron. Just past that. All right. Yep, we're running a coal forge. I have a, a big old giant 200 pound vintage uh, buffalo forge. It's awesome, I love it. How did I learn? Who taught me? I taught myself. That's the short of it. I've been forging knives for about three and a half years. And, uh, oh, who doesn't like the black kids? But anyways, so I've been forging knives for about three and a half years. The first bunch of knives I made, they were just, they were garbage. But from day one, I've been very picky about my work and trying to do the best I can. And, uh, you know, with every knife I make, I try to get better. And I can, I can say that, I can pretty confidently say that each knife I make, I'm, I'm getting better, my finish is finer, you know, stuff like that, so. All right, this, this knife is about ready. We go under the hammer. This is a top tool.
There we go. It's starting to get hot again. Woo! So there you can see, I used that top tool to set in right there. It's all gonna straighten out. Uh, I think we can cut this blade off of this bar. I think it's about time. We don't need that right now. Okay, back over here. How's everybody doing? <laughs> we got some springs, some grinding belts. Fingers are okay. The brush brushes off the scale off the blade. Um, I don't have any finished knives for sale. I do just about everything on custom commission. So you can get in contact with me and, uh, you know, we can kind of figure out what you want. We can make what you want. What works for the both of us. Okay, so time to cut this blade off of this big bar. I don't need a big giant piece of steel to make this knife. So this is a hardy tool. It goes in the hardy hole of your anvil, my little baby anvil. It's almost like an ax blade. But uh, so I'll put the hot steel on there, hit it with the hammer, and it'll cut the steel. So before I do that, I am going to cool the handle off because I'm working with a small piece of fairly small piece of steel. Just cooling the handle off. I'm not quenching it. I'm not hardening it. It's just a little bit hot and it makes it a little more comfortable on my hand. Okay, here we go. You gotta make sure you have enough to go through the handle before it's a tang. This will be like a hidden tang. Uh, it should be enough right, right about there. See how it starts to uh, cut the steel? Come on. And this is 3 eighths bar, so it ain't, you know, you're not gonna get through it. You ain't gonna get through it very quickly. So we're gonna go in for another heat. Get her hot again. So this is kind of what we're aiming for. This is a little seven inch Bowie that I forged yesterday out of the same piece of steel. 80 CRV2, fresh from Germany. It's good stuff. Uh, this morning I put this in my heat treating kiln. Heat treated it and it's ready to be ground, finished ground, hand sanded, everything like that. How's it going? <laughs> Full set of armor. I ain't making no armor. Where am I? I'm in my forge. I'm in my garage shop in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. So now, I ain't touching it. So now, 
Let's see if you can see. The steel is sheared very thin. So now I can basically just kind of bend it off. pretty good start to a, a smaller hunting sized bowie knife you know maybe six seven inches long Just flatten it out we're gonna go back into the forge get it hot again and maybe work on drawing the tank okay there we go do I teach classes no I don't not yet Maybe someday when I have a, a, a shop that's a little bit more suited to it, but I'm still very much learning. Every knife I learn something new, or I try to learn something new. So why should I, why should I teach people when I still have a lot of learning to do? Just plugging in my phone. There we go. Okay. Uh-oh, there we go. We're good. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're gonna go back under the power hammer. We're gonna draw that tang out. The tang is the piece, the, the part of the knife that goes through the handle. And this will be a, a hidden through tang or a hidden tang, depending on how much material I have. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, it'll get real thin and that's what'll go into like a block of wood or a block of G10 or something like that. Clean it up a little bit. We're gonna pinch this off real, not real thin, we're gonna pinch it down and draw it out. How's it going? Making a knife, the forge and a knife blade. So reflective. <laughs> Thank you. Love my hickory striped jacket. move steel too cold or you can develop stress cracks or stuff like that. So we're going to get it like a nice orange heat which is about 16, 15, 1600 degrees, probably even hotter than that, probably around 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to draw the tank. All right. Tang will be uh, slimmer, 
and that's what the handle will, the, the handle will have a couple of holes drilled into it, and that tank will go into the handle. I'm liking it. I'm liking how it's turning out. The tank might seem kind of small now. It's just, it's just, uh, it's not very wide. It's very thick. This knife is still almost three eighths of an inch thick. So we got a lot of steel to work with. So. Sure. Almost ready to go in for another heat. It is about 30 degrees out here. I have been forging knives. It'll be four years this fall. So about three and a half years right now. Fine, fine. Once I go into uh, work on the bevel some more, where the blade comes to a point, the uh, the steel will naturally begin to kind of saber up and get a nice curve to it. Why not cut it with a saw or a grinder? Nobody got time to cut knives out. Forge them out. That's how knives are meant to be made. That's how I look at it. Field grade and heirloom grade. Those are my two different styles of construction of how I like to finish knives. So a field grade knife has more of like the bare bones utility of wanting, a, you know, I want a knife to take out in the field to go skin a deer with, to go, you know, fillet some bluegills, to go, you know, or just, just to carry on your hip and not worry about it getting scratched, getting rusted, stuff like that. A field grade knife, it's all about utility, and utility is beautiful. An heirloom grade knife, that's a knife where, uh, Spend a little bit more time, you know, hand sanding the blades, getting a nice satin finish, uh, buffing and polishing handles. Uh, field grade knife and a utility knife, they're both the same knife in essence. They're both forged out of the same steel. They're both heat treated in a temperature controlled heat treating oven. Everything's the same, you know. They're both very high quality knives. They'll cut the same, but a heirloom grade knife, it's just a very refined finish. I guess you could call it a piece of art, but it's still meant to cut. The knife that I carry around is an heirloom grade knife. It has a beautiful hand sanded finish, but a beautiful hand sanded finish immediately begins to patina the second you cut something with it. So it's. Making heirloom style knives is the lat is the uh, it's a labor of love. Chase out one little scratch, and then as soon as you cut something with it, it's scratched up. Okay.
So there, the tang was a little bit low on the Ricasso, which is this piece right here. So I just kind of straightened it out. It still has to come out some more. The Ricasso is nice and flat. That leaves me a good spot to put my initial stamp. I think I'm just going to straighten up my, uh, my blade profile. You know, I think we'll get it to look like a nice knife and then I think we might call it good. We've been rolling for about 40 minutes now, so. I really appreciate everybody coming out. I hope, uh, hope everybody's doing well and staying sane during the outbreak. Fortunately enough, I've just been working. I work alone, work at home. That's about it. It's etching from food. Basi yeah, it's, it's rusting essentially. But uh, a patina, a patina on a blade, it's, I love a nice patina on a blade. I did not make my own initial stamp. I had to buy it from somebody. Another local company, actually. Buckeye Engraving, they make good stuff. Please do this again. Acid etch knives with artwork. Why acid etch when you can engrave them? Let's see that power hammer. My power hammer. I'll try to move it around a little bit camera not the power hammer the power hammer weighs a couple thousand pounds there's a little bit better shot of it yeah i'll show the forge as well come on okay there's a little bit better shot of the power hammer it is a tire hammer it runs off a tire clutch It is a, it's made by my friend, Dave Custer down in Kentucky. He makes a great tire hammer. This one has a 68 pound ram and it has made the rough forging so much fun. It gets all the really heavy stuff out of the way so you can focus on the really refining, you know, refining a blade. Let's see. Just to show you kind of what it can do, I'm gonna get this one inch round bar of mild steel hot. We'll see how she forges. We'll keep on forging on the, uh, the knife though. The buoys. Just tend it to the fire a little bit gonna be a minute before that steel gets hot so okay say so here's my forge my big forge hey Steve glad you could make it I got a big old vintage Buffalo forge it is massive cast iron I mean I can I, I could barely pick it up. And then I'm running it on a champion blower, a uh, motorized blower, it's not a hand crank blower. But that's, it's wonderful. That thing blows some serious air, so. I need to tend my fire a little better. So, thank you. It is badass. 
love my forge. I love all my tools. I did not build it, no. It's a vintage forge. It was made in probably the 1910s, 1920s. We're gonna go back to the to the anvil over here and just work on this bowie a little bit. Just refine it just a little bit more. What kind of boots do I wear? You could probably guess. They are Iron Rangers, Black Iron Rangers, Red Wings. They're awesome. IG Page, back to Forging Company. I'm here to forge tonight. Page will come later. Okay. It's getting hot. Any tips for making your first knife? Be patient. That's the one thing that is severely lacking. I lack, it's like everybody's lacking. Be patient. Um, you don't, you don't need to be, you don't need to make a, a million knives to get really good at it. You be patient and take it slow. You can make something fantastic and like know what you're looking for. Katie and Chris, how's it going? Hope your dad's doing well, Chris. Okay. Okay. A little bit lower heat because we're getting closer to final shape. Coming along. So you can kind of see that, that shade ridge right there. That, that steel is just getting thinner and thinner down to the edge. It's probably about uh, 3 16 thick. <laughs> no steel in the face. So the knife is coming along. It's probably what I would consider a rough forging, and in one day I might forge five five knives rough like that, and then the next day kind of put my initial stamp on them and refine everything. I think we're going to go one more heat on the Bowie knife, kind of get a nice profile going. It's not going to be very close. It'll it'll get my brain thinking about what what I have to do next to get the knife to look like how I want it to look. That's all. That's what it's all about. Having a vision in your brain and then fulfilling that vision in steel and wood or G10 or what have you. Hello, how's it going? Big bar of steel is almost hot though, so I'll bring the camera into the power hammer and I'll show you what she can do. It's gonna go nice and light on these, you know, final hits to get this blade looking a little bit more to what I'm thinking. All right, she's happy.
coming along. She's still quite thick back here. I like on my fighters and my bowies, I like them to be nice and uh, parallel and then come up to a nice tip. Nice subtle curves, nothing too crazy. It is the LC King chore coat. What tools do you use to refine? Um, I'll go back with nice lighter heats, just with a hand hammer. I usually wear ear protection, but I want to talk to you guys, so. But yeah, so to refine the shape, I'll try to get it about as close as I can by hand. You know, we still got to make knives, still got to make some money, still got to pay the bills, so I'll get it. Uh-oh. Ah, there we go. Let's go under the power hammer. The big bar of steel's hot. I'll show you what it can do. Okay. All right. So this is one inch square mild steel. I just tap, I tap the steel between the dies or something like that to get the scale off. One heat, so one cycle of getting the steel hot. It, I went from one inch square to, I don't know, three quarter square, about six inches long. Now doing that by hand, might have taken three or four heats at least and somebody swinging a sledgehammer. Alrighty. All right, I think that's good for forging. I can kind of show you some of the stuff I'm working on. If anybody would like to see that, I have a couple of knives on the bench over there. We're watching knife making. Not so much anymore. But I'll show you, I, got, I just have a couple of knives on the bench, nothing too crazy. Only one's finished, but it has to be refinished. What kind of hammer are you using? It is a, it is a tire hammer. It's a tire power hammer. Okay, let's keep going. 68 pound Ram, super nice, runs off a 110 volt. Super nice. I am in Northeast Ohio in uh, Cuyahoga Falls. Okay, we got a couple of knives. You know what, let's flip this around. There's a messy little workbench. It was a lot messier. It's cold, that's okay. I was born and raised in Ohio. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it's, it's warm by the forge. Anyways, here's a little Puko. I'm working on Scandinavian influenced kind of bushcraft knife, you know, nice utility ergonomic. This is my field finish. It's a machine finish on the blade. So you can take it up, beat it up, send it back to me. I can refinish it. Yada, yada. Good stuff. This is a Kephart kind of a hunting knife I'm working on. It's a nice big smudge on there. It's my, uh, my initials that I hammer into all my blades with a stamp. Get the blade hot. How much do I sell them for? Well, that all depends. This is a big buoy I'm working on. It's about a nine, nine and a half inch blade. Just rough ground. So then I took the knife that we were just forging, made it about nine inches long and rough ground or he treated it rough ground it 
stuff like that. So this one's a little bit more refined. This is another 9, 9 10-inch buoy. This is for a hog hunter down in Tex Texas. Not Texas, Tennessee. But this is just in the works. Super rough. Please try to make a knife. You can message me. I'll even help you out. There's some more tools. Woo uh, a little dagger. This will be like a San Francisco style push dagger. It'll go like in between your knuckles. The handle will come across. It'll be nice. And then this is one. Back to the air. I'll go back there in a second. Okay. So, let's see. This Bowie knife that's finished. Let me get a little paper towel. It's been sitting in the sheath, wet forming to the sheath. This is a seven inch hunting sized Bowie knife. It's my favorite size knife. I actually made this knife for myself, but I ended up selling it. So, there you can see, nice little knife. I don't know, let's see, we'll flip it around. We'll flip her around. It's a nice little knife, you can see the hamon, but you can also see rust on the blade. I don't know why, but that leather sheath, that little devil, rusted the blade. So I, I'll take it back, put it back in the vise, and meticulously hand sand the blade, get all that rust out of there. It's just very, very, you know, you can almost barely see it. But I'll clean it back up before I send it out. That would be unacceptable. Um, the handle is black G10, which is like a fiberglass, in fiberglass resin, coined copper spacers, iron guard, iron spacer, and then this nice little butt cap. That's a nice little knife. And then the sheath, it's a pain in the butt because it, you know, is rusting it, but it's a nice tight fit. It ain't going nowhere. It ain't going to fly out of your belt. If you're riding a horse, carrying a knife like that, it ain't going to go nowhere. If you're running through the woods, you know, I've put my knives, I've wrapped them in tape and stuff, but they were really tight in that leather sheath. So I decided, you know, I'll hand sand it. It's not that big of a deal. I even put, I oiled the blade really well. And even after I oiled the sheath, and oiled the blade and everything, it's still rusted, you know, a couple days after I thought it would be dry. What grit did I use to get to rust, rust out? Um, on that knife, it's hand sanded to 400 grit, so I'll just go back with 400 grit and just clean it up. It's, it's really nothing. If you have a knife that's rusty, I would use 4.0 steel wool and maybe a little bit of oil. Grinder? Air hammer. It ain't no air hammer. It's a tire hammer. If you shoot me a message afterwards on my page on Bactyl Forging Company, I can actually give you the information on this tire hammer. It's basically uh, the antique little giant hammer that, you know, most blacksmiths in America had the turn of the century, but it's built using a tire as a clutch. It's awesome. It works super well. It's made by Dave Custer in Kentucky. Grinder. Okay, this is my grinder. I built this grinder after building three or four. It's a two by 72 built you know, kind of inspired by a KMG. I got double lights going. There. And I do all my work on here. Let me get some better shots. 
it's nice. It gets the job done. I want to make some more upgrades to it. I'm going to make... I want to get a VFD, like a variable frequency drive. That should be awesome. And then I have an even heat heat treating oven. I can fit a, what, a 14-inch blade in there. Works great. I ran it this morning. It's awesome. It's well worth the investment. If you want to make serious tools that people can rely on, because that's... If you have a knife and it won't cut, then it ain't a knife. Do you use the grinder to sharpen, shape the knife? I use the grinder for just about everything. Most, a lot of rough work. My field grade knives, they're finished on the grinder, so I'll use uh, a certain kind of belt to get a nice fine finish on it. Hello from Argentina. Well, hello from Ohio. Hmm, anything else? Ah. Uh, people who write stupid comments are stupid, more stupid than the comments they write. Hmm, anything else? We can answer a question or two, but we've been going for an hour. Should wrap it on up. If you want to uh, find some more of my work, it is bactylforgingcompany.com. What is my favorite knife I grew up with? That's a good question. I'm still growing up. I'm only 22 years old. Um, I don't know. I, when I was probably 13 or 14, my dad got me a, a Leatherman. Uh, a Leatherman, I can't remember, but the multi-tool. And I carried that everywhere. And then I started making my own knives. That was kind of how it all started. I wanted to make my own knives, take fishing. Here we are. My website is bactylforgingcompany.com. There's a couple of spots open there if you want to get in a custom order. Yeah. We got a couple of spots. You can I'm pretty much almost booked through the whole year, so that's it's hard to do. It's hard to get. So very, you know, happy and proud of what's going on. I do I only make fixed blades? Yes. Right now, I only make fixed blades. I'd like to get into more folders and traditional liner, or not liner locks, uh, slip joints, but I'd like to get some more machining equipment for that. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Caitlin. I think we're going to wrap it all up. Thanks, Nathan. Do you need a forge, or could you build a small fire and do it? Uh, you could build a small fire but you need some kind of forced air. But, uh, you know, you just need something something small, something to get hot. You don't even need a forge to forge a knife. If you want to forge knives, forging itself, getting steel hot, and forging it under a hammer, it's a ton of fun. It's the most, it's the funnest part of knife making. The only problem is it's only about a quarter, if that, of knife making. So, but yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Filson Live. This has been super fun. You know, hopefully you can do it again. Um, if you would, if you can, I, there will be a link to donate to the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank. They are a fantastic local organization on the far side of the Cuyahoga Valley. They're doing great. For a dollar, a, a, a dollar donated equals four meals. It's just an awesome, you know, they're doing an awesome job. So if anybody can donate to them to help them keep doing what they do, that would be fantastic. Thanks, Sean. Got a knife coming here soon. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate all the kind words, guys. Sure thing, Kevin. All right. Uh. I believe that is it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.